a large model showman's engine part 78 getting ready to make a shiny cover for the front of the cylinder from a piece of stainless steel before machining this I need to do some work on the original cast iron cylinder cover this is a good quality piece of stainless steel from which I'm going to make the cover it's bigger than I need it to be and believe it or not this piece of metal cost over 75 pounds I bought it from a company in Leeds, West Yorkshire, called Richard Austin Alloys. It's very heavy and I'm really trying hard not to drop it on my foot. A few years ago I dropped an unmachined cylinder casting on my foot and it's never been the same since. I mean my foot, not the casting. This is a precaution. The piece of metal is very sharp on the edges and it's heavy. So I'm using my prox and angle grinder to remove the sharp edge. First on one side, and then on the other side. As I've previously mentioned, this is a very heavy piece of metal, and I'm going to have to handle it to fit it in the chuck, and I can do without cutting my hands on it. This Proxon angle grinder fitted with a flapper wheel is a really useful tool, and I use it a lot for a variety of different operations. This piece of stainless steel measures one and a half inches thick by six inches in diameter. And as you can see in this clip, I'm going to have to machine quite a lot of it away to fit over this original cylinder cover. Why did I buy such a big piece of stainless steel, you may be thinking? Well, this is a tutorial, and I'm going to show how to reduce the size of this. I also intend to try and make some fundamental errors when machining this. It's better to watch me doing it than to do it yourself. Here's the original cylinder cover, and it has a nut that's been brazed or silver soldered into the centre of it. You may be wondering why I'm bothering to make an ornate cylinder cover to fit over the perfectly good cylinder cover that I already have. Here's the answer. During the winter, I didn't look at the traction engine very much, and now spring has sprung, I had a look at it, and I couldn't turn the flywheel over. I left some water in the cylinder by accident, and the piston was slightly rusted into the cylinder. Starting with this episode, I'm not just making an ornate cylinder cover, I'm making a lubrication system, so when I park up the engine for the winter, I can inject oil into the cylinder to prevent rusting. The only way to do this at the moment is to inject some oil into the cylinder via the cylinder drain cocks, and that's a very fiddly job. What I'm doing here is looking at an easy way to hold the original cylinder cover in the forge or self-centering chuck. The register on the cylinder cover is too shallow to fit in the chuck because the front of these jaws are chamfered. So the only thing to do is to remove these four jaws and fit the other jaws that will hold the component from the outside. This is my Smart and Brown lathe. It's a six inch centre height lathe, which is not really a lot, but this is a very big chuck and it's great for holding large pieces of metal. With the original jaws removed, it's a simple job to fit the other ones. Before I start though, I think it's time for a very overdue clean up. I'm not very good at keeping my workshop tidy, I really don't have the time. Making videos like this one really does take a long time and I make one nearly every day. Clearly marked on the chuck is a number one and oddly enough this is where you put the first jaw which is also marked number one. The other one is marked number two, the third one is marked number three and the fourth one is marked number four. So provided you put them in the right order, everything should be fine. Fitting these outside jaws should allow me to hold the cylinder cover in position by its outside edge. All I want to do initially is remove the nut that's been silver soldered or brazed in the center of the cover. When I fit the cover in position and tap it firmly onto the jaws, two things are apparent. The nut isn't quite in the middle, and no matter how carefully I tap the part using a copper-faced hammer, it still doesn't run true. I think it's time to call in the cavalry. Before I true up the cylinder cover in the chuck, I'm going to just show you something. There is no possible way I can turn this with the tool that's in the tool holder. The tool post won't rotate because it's pegged in position. What I need is another cutting tool to fit in the other part of the tool post. Here it is, it's perfect for cast iron, it's a round nose tool. I just need to pull it out of the tool holder slightly. 
then securely retighten the tool in position. Now it should be fine for the job. I'm going to level up the entire centre part of this cylinder cover. But for the moment, I'm just removing the nut in the centre. It's a brass nut and the brazing material is very similar, so it cuts really easily. I didn't want to stress out the cover, so I was quite gentle with it. I made a few gentle passes and turned away the nut entirely. It's looking better already. The nut wasn't in the centre of the cover, so I'm glad to see the end of it. I think at some stage in the past, this engine must have had an ornamental cover fitted. I'm taking it a stage further. I need to machine very gently all the way across the rough casting part of the cover. And for reasons that will become obvious, I do need this to be accurate. I'm using a piece of brass bar to move the cylinder cover casting away from the chuck. And by repeating this process all the way around, I finally get the cylinder cover to run true because the pointer of the DTI, or dial test indicator, is running over a layer of paint, but it's going to be very close indeed by the time I've finished. I need to keep the needle on the zero, or as near as I can, all the way around. Before finishing, I tighten the chuck and check the DTI once again. In this sequence about turning, I will be speeding up the video. This is running at about four times normal speed. And when I start to machine that big lump of stainless steel, I'll probably run the lathe even faster just to get through the sequence without any viewers dropping into a coma. I'm very pleased with the finish. It doesn't matter about the bit in the middle because that's going to be drilled out very shortly. Let the drilling begin. First of all, with quite a large centre drill, I drill the centre of the cylinder cover quite deeply. The sound of the centre drill tells me when it's had enough. Now I'm drilling a hole in the centre of the cover, which is two imperial sizes down from half an inch. Once I'd finished the drilling operation, I turned off the lathe's power, and here once again with the lathe running at four times normal speed, I thread the hole in the centre of the cover entirely by hand. This is a taper tap, so it was very easy to do. It only took a little bit of pressure once I got onto the parallel part of the tap. It's quite easy tapping by hand with a chuck of this size. There's a lot of chuck to get hold of to allow easy turning in both directions. This hole is now threaded half inch by 32 threads per inch. And that's it for this episode. I'll put the original cylinder cover on one side until I need to make the part that fits into the threaded hole. The next video will be all about turning the piece of stainless steel that I bought. And there are quite a few do's and don'ts to remember to avoid injury. This is quite a large and powerful lathe, and in back gear it's more than powerful enough to tear my arm off if I get it wrong. So I'll try not to do that. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.